Ooh, baby, let the drama begin. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video and welcome. This is my review for House on Fire. This is season one. This is episode two. As I said, let the drama begin. Hey, they took no time. No time <laughs> getting us into the whole dramatics of it all, if you will. Listen, we start right off in this episode at the OTA ball. Um, which is open to all. Um, this is something that they're doing weekly. It seems they're doing this weekly and it's literally letting the kids, they, they're honing their skills. They're actually, you know, when I was coming up, it, you know, balls were like here and there, that kind of thing. So this is fantastic that they actually have balls that they actually can go to weekly and just keep on working on your stuff, working on your stuff, and then actually battling and, you know, doing your thing. So I love this. I said, this is cool. Child, and, but you think it's kind of, I wouldn't think that all of the big, like the big houses are actually there, probably the younger kids in the house, but not like they're legends and stuff. But anyway, Miss Lena ends up showing at the OTA uh, ball, and she was very flippant with the girls and things. And it just, I, I'm starting to see some of what they were saying of this like shitty attitude that she kind of has. And I'm like, okay, girl, it's interesting. It's interesting. Now, here's the thing, Chanel. Chanel is not here for the Lena movement at all. She just ain't here for it. She, I think she has some real tight discernment, really, but because she's kind of like, we don't need her. We don't need her. The energy that she's bringing, mm, not so much. Um, and basically laughing at her, like laughing at what she's given, like, girl, you serious? Like, whatever. And I'm like, okay. It just kind of, it kind of went around and they kind of had a little chat and it was kind of like, okay, girl, I'm going to give y'all this, but girl, ugh. you know, that's kind of how her attitude is. And I'm like, girl, I'm starting to see some of what they were talking about. I'm like, this is going to be sticky. This is really going to be sticky. And all in all, she didn't stay very long. She actually came and made an appearance. Very important. And then she rolled out. She was flipping the whole time she was there. I said, interesting. And now the one thing uh, Yusuf was saying, you know, there's definitely a conversation that needs to be had with the girls and you, but this is really not the place for it. You know, they talked about this barbecue that was going to be taking place and that um, maybe at the cookout. The cookout would be a better place to actually have the conversation that the, the house needs to have, which I was there. I'm like, yeah, out of ball is definitely not it. That was part of the problem in the first place is how their house business got out into the social media. So definitely not out of ball, not at all, not at all. Um, and you can sense the tension is of when she came in, like, oh. She's here. Oh, they're here. Wait a minute. She's not Miyaki Mugler, is she? <gasps> and you know that's what it gives, girl. <laughs> that whole that whole vibe. So yeah, it was just kind of awkward. Anyway, moving on. So we see um, Chanel and Tati, and they're actually in this episode. They're getting ready for the latex ball. Latex ball is a big deal. It's like the big ball every year. It's, it's a big deal. I've not actually been to the latex ball. 
I always say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go so I could, you know, just experience it. But it really is a big deal in the ballroom community. You will hear the latex ball, the latex ball. You will always hear about the latex ball. Um, celebrities show up. I think Rihanna has been to the latex ball before. And you, there, there are celebrities, many celebrities who have actually showed up at the latex. It's the place to be. It's the place to be. But they were talking about a lot of like what they were actually planning on doing for the latex ball and that kind of thing. So with Tati, Tati is a voguer. She has had a lot of body work done and things of that nature. And she's going into um, moving on to take on like a fashion category. OK, so this was her thing. And uh, her and Chanel were talking about it. Of course, she's nervous and that kind of thing. Um, she's really done. Well, not all that she could do as a Vogue in the ballroom, but she's known for it. She's a princess, um, princess of Vogue in the ballroom. So very, very accomplished in that. And again, you got, you have to, if you could do more things, you do more things. When it comes to the girls, you know, femme queens, there's a lot of things they can actually do. So they should continue to build on their skill set by all means. You know, they have body categories and they got face categories and they just, you know, just being, you know, their realness categories and all of these different things. So absolutely. And as she was saying, and I, I always wonder about this when she was saying about her having this body work done, I always wonder about my girls doing. V honey, Vogan is beautiful, but it's painful. There ain't no way to get around the, falling back on your legs and on your knee, baby. And here, it is not no nice thing when you falling in dips, honey. Child, you get used to but girl, child. It it it's it's it looks good, but it don't feel so good all the time. And I mean, the best vulgar shot, they hit their heads and, they, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's a contact sport. Okay. And when you start getting pumped and you got this work going on, I always wonder about it. And I worry about the girls crashing to the floor like that and carrying on. And, you know, there, there's a skill set in a trans girl doing voguing, you're literally slamming your body around. Their bodies are tender. Their bodies are tender. They're soft. You know what I mean? You like you're softening up and you fall into the ground. I always wonder about that. And I always worry about them and, and all that. It's just like anything else. You know, dancers shit their feet and all kind of stuff. You know, ballet dancers, child ballerinas, their feet shall be tore up. Be tore up. But what they do is so beautiful. You know what I mean? So anyway, she kind of touched on that a little bit. It's less stress on her body. You know what I mean? Doing like a fashion category. And again, she's kind of, I think she's a little bored with the Vogue and part of it. And she did what she wanted to do right now. And so it's good that she's doing some other things. Um, they actually had a little conversation and Chanel stood down in the fact that she not buying the Lena situation. She just ain't here for it. She not buying it. And she like, listen, I'm gonna ride with the house and we're gonna do what we're gonna do, but I child like a bitch. This <laughs> was given. So that's that. Now, AJ and Exotic. We seen Exotic and he was working the girls out and helping everybody, helping the other house members with all their stuff, because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, and they're all working in these different categories, and he is helping everybody through and, and really working them, you know what I mean? He's giving me, I want to see it. I want to see it full out. I want, you know, training. He's training. And let me just say this when it comes to this AJ. So we got a real good chance to see AJ in this episode, I ain't no AJ fan, y'all. I am not an AJ fan. Let me tell you what my 
my view of Mr. AJ is. He not bad looking, okay? He not bad looking at all, at all. Nice looking kid. But I don't trust AJ. And I really don't trust AJ as pertains to exotic. And this was in the beginning of the episode. I was saying, mm -mm, you rubbing me wrong. You're giving me very sneaky, opportunistic butch queen. I said it. And I'll say it again. You're giving me sneaky, opportunistic witch queen. And I think you plan with exotic as a way to get into the house. I think you think if you can maneuver with exotic because y'all have a past, that you can get into the house. See, y'all, y'all separated ways for a reason. So y'all ain't saying all of everything, but y'all separated ways for a reason. There's a reason. And it doesn't seem like it was really exotic. It doesn't seem to me like exotic was the one that really walked away. It seems like he the one that kind of was like, well, damn, what happened? You know what I mean? Kind of thing. And now it seems as though you've been gone wherever, doing whatever it is you're doing for however long you've been doing it. And now you want to roll back in and you see him and you want to play this game with him because you can get to the end goal of what you want by playing a game with him. See, it doesn't matter how beautiful you are, how gorgeous you are. Child niggas play games. With the prettiest girls, with the ugliest girls, with the, the the girls with the fiercest body, with the fat girl. It don't matter who you are, niggas is niggas, child. And they are going to be, boys are boys are boys are boys. Butch queens are going to always play whatever their part are, and you got to protect yourself. So I was sitting there, and I'm screaming at the TV. I'm like, listen, listen. Protect your neck, sis. Protect your neck. Because I don't trust him. Baby, I done seen your kind, honey. Yeah, you're cute. But exotic's cute too. But see, it don't this ain't about looks. So it's not a situation of, oh, I'm so fine and he's not. No, that ain't the case at all. But you need to protect your neck with him. I, I don't I ain't I'm not team AJ. I'm really not. Moving on. So Lena and Yusuf actually sit down. And that's when we kind of get more in depth about why Yusuf, because I said, well, what real, you know, what's the what's the real details of why Yusuf is kind of like he he's entertaining it because again, about the the movement of the house and the benefit to the house and what is good business-wise, but he feels a certain type of way and then he leads on and that's what he was saying. I basically broke rules to make her a New York mother. I broke rules. I talked about that a little bit in that last episode about how yeah, there's times when father and mother will make decisions without the kids and just kind of push something through and it don't always work out. You know, it don't always work. And here it is. That's her. That's Miss Lena. Miss Lena. She, he pushed through, didn't go through the channels the way that, you know, things you are supposed to be done to get her into the position. And then basically, kept, she was a shitty mother. That's what we kept calling her. Shit mother, shit parent. That she literally was a shitty mother. That it really was. She was a bit too self-centered. She wasn't, she didn't have those qualities. She just didn't have them. And that's the thing. Everybody not meant to be a mother. All females are not meant to be mothers. And all house folk ain't meant to be mothers. Okay? So it just is what it is. Our world literally parallels the regular world. It really, really does. I, and and I'm, I'm glad that they're doing it so you can actually really see how much our world just parallels the reg the regular old world. That's you know, 
that we live in. It, it really is a parallel. So it's cool. But all in all, I said all that to say, Miss Lena wasn't a good house mother, honey. And nobody is disagreeing with the fact that she was not good. Um, so she is saying, you know, she wants to come back, but she doesn't want to come back as a mother. She just basically wants to be a child of the house. So then I'm saying again, why? Because I can't understand. I, like, listen, I was the mother of the house of Treasure. I, I would never come back and be, I, well, I created it. I created it, okay? I created it, period. So I would never come back and be anything other than mother. You know, that just, it just doesn't make sense. What do you want? What do you want, ma'am? Hmm? What you want from us? What these bitches want from me? What you, what you want? So I got my good eye on her, too. I got my good eye on Miss Lynn. Something ain't right. I feel like, I do feel like she's lonely and I feel like she missed the camaraderie of it. But what else is it? What, what else do you, what do you want? Anyway, moving on. We meet Lorenzo. So cute. So cute. We like Lorenzo. Now I'm team Lorenzo. <laughs> I'm team Lorenzo. We like Lorenzo. Lorenzo is Exotic's boyfriend. And they are, they've been together for two years, but they were friends for five years. But they've been, you know, they transitioned into an actual relationship and they've been in a relationship for two years. And I'm like, oh, this thing makes me nervous, though, because Lorenzo is kind of like, I could see me kind of doing something with the ballroom and exotics like, no, not at all. I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't know. Do we ever say what his sign is? But I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn, old nasty piece of Capricorn, a January Capricorn. I don't take on relations with nobody to do what I do. If you sew, no thanks. If you do drag, definitely no thanks. If you if, if you do hair, no thanks. You know, just anybody that does the creative things that I do, I just kind of, I shy away from. Like, I'll take to them as a friend you know, like I, I love being surrounded by other talented people, but as far as a love interest, I can't do it. I can't do it. Mm -mm. Like I just can't. I can't do it. So, and is that controlling? Is that a little narcissistic? Probably, but it just mm, mm. and the drag thing. That's just a whole nother situation altogether. We ain't sharing no goddamn wigs and shit. Like, we ain't doing that. that. You can just forget it. That's not happening. That ain't happening. Child, they be killing me on RuPaul's Drag Race. But who is the trade of the seat? None of y'all. No damn trade. No damn drag queen. What are you talking about? Talking crazy. That's crazy talk. Anyway, anyway, I'm going off. Let me get back, Heidi. Let me get off my soapbox. But I'm, boom, boom, bam, and I'm back. Listen. Child. <sighs> No, no, ma'am. Anyway, so he he can see himself doing a little something exotic and saying no. Lorenzo, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Like you said, I, that's my world. I want to have my world. He have his world. Right. Right. Don't bring no hands to the picnic. So there's that. Okay. So our first meeting of Lorenzo, we like Lorenzo. Lorenzo seems very nice. Very nice. I love them as a couple. I like it. It, it works. I, I I like their energy. It yeah. And he was they did talk about how much time that exotic spends in his mother role. I know that's gonna be kind of taxing because it's it's never ending. There is no stop, it's never ending. Mothers all day, all day, every day. But anyway, so that was that. So that was cool. All right. So let's talk about Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Brooklyn's the baby. So Brooklyn sat with Yusuf. And Yusuf was saying, you know, 
what's going on, how you feeling, this, that thing, and the other. Um, Brooke was not going to get to walk at Latex because none of her categories were on the Latex roster. So I was like, damn, that's, yeah, that's terrible because it's only once a year. And then I'm like, well, that's it, girl. You just show up and be most gorgeous, baby. Somebody will notice you. But yeah, I, I said, that sucks. So that was poor Brooklyn was going through that. Um, and he said that whole Lena thing. Mm, 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 And they touched on Lil Raw's thing a little bit about, you know, respecting elders and that kind of thing. He got, Brooklyn got that part. You know, she ain't disagree. She got that part. Um, but the Lena thing, she's like, uh, uh. And you should saying, well, she don't really know Lena. So all she knows is basically what she's heard. She, she wasn't around when Lena was around. Because remember, she's been gone for like three years. And he said, I understand you wanting to take up for me and, and the fact of what, what, what it was, but let me take on that. Don't you take on my argument. I was like, very good. I was so glad to see him approach that. And that's a good thing because in life, in life, it's never good to go with what somebody else's experience is with somebody else. That you gotta, you meet them for yourself, and you deal with them. Period. And there was a whole conversation that they had actually had because Lena had, and I. Well, first of all, Lena, I thought she was kind of flippant, but she said she wanted to model, and Lena's like, "Oh, well, you know, just girl, we'll get together and and whatever. Just get your stuff and you know whatever." She, I, I felt like she kind of blew her off, but she had some hope. Like, oh yeah, she said she would help me, but I was just like. Girl, I felt like she kind of like blew you off, but okay, no problem. And but that's what he told her: you get whatever you can get from her, you know, as far as that goes. But don't take on that other stuff. That other stuff doesn't come before you. Don't worry about it. So I was glad he he touched on that. Okay, so let's go on to the latex ball. So the ball child, when they as soon as they like showed him standing in line, I was like, oh, you could feel the excitement and the the you could feel the if you've ever been to a ball, if you have ever actually been to any type of a ball, you know it's a there's an atmosphere in the ballroom that is unmatched. Okay, I could talk to you about it all day long, but until you actually experience it, yeah, you just have to try to live it through us, honey. But a ball is the place to be, honey. It is definitely a movement. It's just like going to church catch that. And I could go into that, but I ain't want soapbox on here about that. But yeah, it's just like going to church. There's a certain feel that you get when you go to church. There's a certain feel you get when you go to the ball. And if you don't get that feel, something's wrong with you. But anyway, <laughs> so it's a whole situation. But anyway, so we're at the latex ball. Um, first thing that happens, oh, and we actually we did um, get to um, see everybody getting like they're getting ready and all of that stuff. We did. We seen all of that. We saw everybody getting ready for their little stuff for a ball. So that was cool. Um, and then our girl actually got deemed legendary at the. Um, at the the ball, so that was a big deal. And we actually met her mom, Lolita. We met Lolita's mom, and they talked about all the work that she's done as an ally and that kind of thing. So, very right out the in the beginning, they actually had deemed Lolita as an ally and a legend in the ballroom. Um, not just an ally, you know, she's literally, she's in the ballroom, but she is legendary in the ballroom. So that was a big deal and really a big deal. The fact that she is a cisgendered woman. Um, yeah, it's a lot of good work actually getting the acknowledgement for it. So that was really, really cool. Um, and here's the thing, Lena, I always want to keep calling her Lena because of the way her name was spelled, but it's Lena. Lena 
literally stood them up. She did not show up for the ball. I said, girl, what is this? What is like, what is this? What are you doing? What are you doing? It's like, I don't know, weird, but she did. She stood them up. She didn't show up. So this ain't looking good in the way of you trying to get back with them. You just, how you not show up at the latex, but like, whatever. Anyway, and then never really no real excuses on why she didn't. It's just kind of like, mm, I'm a naked. I don't know. Really like blowing things off. And that was that. Anyway, but here's the real kicker. So we got Tati. She's all dressed in her, her red. She's in red gown, done, snatched, honey. Her blonde hair, giving this whole Marilyn Monroe thing. I said, yes, Miss Tati, honey. She, listen, it was given, honey, we're just two little girls from Little Rock. I said, come on with it. But she just wasn't ready. She just didn't feel confident. So she let her category go by. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Yusuf was pissed, was pissed. And I'm like, yeah, all this money and all this time getting her to get pissed. Anyway, but then Yusuf goes up and does his category. And baby, when I tell you that thing was doing, he was doing labels and he was breaking it down, baby. My do-rag is this. And I think the do-rag was Yves Saint Laurent and the, uh, the earrings were Yves Saint Laurent and he, child is tight. And listen, it was labels down to the floor. It was a lot. It was a lot. And somebody else was, I, I don't know who that person was. They was hating. They was hating. This is show, real live ballroom and the way that it goes. The one part, they was like, it's menswear. It's menswear. You should have went ahead and walked for Femme Queen. Those are women's garments. And the category didn't call for any of that. The category called for labels. They didn't say whether they had to be male pieces, female pieces, or anything. That's the ballroom. That's the ballroom. Baby, they're going to try to get you any way they can. And he was coming through there slaying. And they was like, uh-uh, we got a nitpick. That is the ballroom. The ballroom is shady. It is a shady, shady cutthroat place, especially when you start talking about categories that have money attached to them. It's a very, very shady, slippery slope, and it's it, sometimes very, very unfair, very unfair, well, especially when it gets, that's, that's the drama of it all, you know. You know, queens always, we like drama. That's the drama of it all, honey. You can get on the, on the damn thing and walk down and get chopped. And you know, a chop is unforgiving. That's the one thing, like on Pose, they show y'all all these points and all. There is no point system. There's not that. There's tens or nothing. Okay. And one chop will end your walk. There could be seven judges. Six of them say you are the shit. One bitch say you're not. That ends where you, that's, that's it for you, period. The ballroom is very, that first round. In that first round, one bitch, you could have been that you could be the ex, and that happens a lot. Y'all done played with the same boy, and that bitch see you, honey, and this is where she's gonna get you, honey. This is where she's gonna turn up on you and she chop your ass. And ain't nothing nobody can do about it, child. That's why sometimes there's fights and stuff at balls. Yeah, it is what it is. But it can be very unforgiving at times. So that was that, but came out on top. They was like, child, you hating. Stop it, honey, and go on. But I was like, I was getting so irritated. I said, somebody don't get her, honey, and tell her to shut up, honey. So she's trying. And I said, she over there, hey, girl, shut up, honey. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was all into it, hollering and shit. I said, Lord have mercy. Anyway, girl, it, don't never, it never goes away. It just is what it is. So last thing, let's talk about the cookout. So we're at the cookout. They're doing a little stuff. Every that's the cookout's real cute. It's after you know after the ball. It looked like the next day. And 
Lena shows up to the to the cookout like she was supposed to, and then she's leaving. She didn't stay very long at all. And again, it was this very flippant kind of, I mean, girl, was there some shade in the reception? Of course. That's to be acknowledged and that's to be expected. There's a little shade, girl. But she was still like this very flippant kind of, and they've actually told her, girl, this is how some of the girls feel that, you know, you were and how you kind of carried on. And then here you go again. Now you're running out again. And Yusuf is getting like pissed. He's getting pissed off and his patience is getting short. Chanel is still on her shit with like, see, look at her, look at the bitch. You know, again, I'm here like, what's going on? What is it that she, it feel, what it feels like, you want to come back to the house but you want them to kiss your ass and they don't see the value in you, sis. So nobody's willing to kiss your ass. They, they do see some value in having you with them, but you personally, they don't see the value in you. They've already peeped your whole card. So they're like, girl, whatever. And you're not helping. You're not helping your situation at all. So that's that. She laughed. I was like, child, good riddance, honey. Goodbye. Y'all better than me. I, bye, girl. Bye. See you, girl. You know, well, goodbye. Now, here's the other one. Child Miss AJ, honey. I can't miss AJ. Child Miss AJ, you rubbed me so wrong. So wrong. I In the beginning, I said I felt like AJ was an opportunistic little butch queen. And he is. And you shady. You shady and I ain't here for what you got going on. He was so disrespectful, so disrespectful. And these types of behaviors, AJ, are the types of behaviors that pretty people such as yourself end up losing teeth behind because you was trying, Lorenzo. You were. You were trying, Lorenzo. Honey, Lorenzo was being nothing but upfront, and he didn't know you. He don't know your background story. He was being nice. Like, oh, somebody new coming around. And listen, let me tell you something. The kids ain't always nice. When somebody new comes around, we start. Who's this bitch? What's this bitch about? For the very reasons that AJ was conjuring up. Being shady, throwing jabs on the slide, Man, just went out of his way to make certain that Lorenzo knew that there was a pass between him and mother. I said, what kind of shit? I said, oh my God. And you could tell it was at points, it was getting so uncomfortable. It was really, really getting uncomfortable for Exotic. And he's like, what is he doing? Like, why is he doing this? Like, he had already said, you know, like in his confessional, basically, you know, I can keep the two of them away from each other and then we don't have no problems. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And that's why I was saying Miss AJ, because that's how he was acting, child. He was giving you that old, nasty, spiteful, vindictive butch queen behavior. I said, look at you. Look at you, girl. Cutting up, carrying on. And the thing is, you literally want to sow some seeds of discord. You want to come in between them and you were mad disrespectful. It was really, because I wrote in my notes, he was bordering disrespect. It wasn't bordering disrespect. He was being disrespectful. He was doing the most. He was doing the most. And Lorenzo caught it. He caught it. But that was your intention. And here's the thing. You want to get in between them. You want to break them up. Why? Why? Just because you think that you can. I'm Team Lorenzo. I told y'all from the door. AJ made me not care for him very much. I just asked him. I see you, girl. I see you, bitch. You doing too much. And it ain't necessary. I don't trust you. 
worth exotic at all because I think it's all for nothing. You don't want them. You just want to be problematic. You're giving chaos demon. And it's all it's something you want. It's something you want. You don't have to destroy his life to get up into the house. It's not necessary. It's not a prerequisite. You're giving chaos demon. But anyway, this is it. This is episode two of House on Fire. Like I said, they didn't take no time, baby, to get to the drama of it all. So that's where we are. It is what it is. Um, I'm going to catch y'all on the next episode. And AJ, 